I am makeup free and egg status has been achieved. Hey sis, over the past year, I've had a lot of people ask me about the process by which I create Franken makeup. I've been making Franken makeup slash makeup crafts as a hobby for quite a while. It started years and years ago. The very first time I tried to fix a broken blush by adding rubbing alcohol to it and realized, hey, if I can do this with a broken piece of makeup, I can do it with just about anything. However, I am borrowing the phrase Franken makeup from one of my personal favorite creators, Sophia Nygaard, whose incredible bad makeup science series has led to millions of YouTube views, hours of entertainment for her subscribers, and one very lucrative collab with ColourPop Cosmetics. So if she can do it, That's it. I thought the way that made the most sense to create this video is to start by showing you an example process of how I generally create Franken eyeshadow, which is what we're focusing on today. And then I thought I would take you on a little tour of all of the makeup that I have Frankensteined and crafted with and do a little bit of a swatch party. Hello, disclaimer corner. Welcome to my lawsuit avoidance. I cannot promise that if you use the same products that I use, you won't have some sort of reaction to it. I highly recommend doing some sort of patch test anytime you combine makeup, anytime you have anything that is intended to go on your face. You will probably not get the exact same results I get, and that's not because I'm a professional, it's just because 80% of making Franken makeup is entirely luck and ratios. I don't use exact measurements. If anything bad happens to you, that's on you, chief. Have I ever had any allergic reactions from Franken makeup? Great question. No, I haven't. That does not mean it will never happen. These are the victims for today. These are the four I eyeshadows from the Wet n Wild Bed of Roses quad. I actually decluttered this quad a couple of months ago before I moved, but I never actually got rid of it. <laughs> it's just been sitting in a drawer. I thought these shadows would be really fun to work with because I actually don't like the formula of either the shimmers or the mattes very much, so I don't really care what happens to them. I'm curious to see exactly what will happen once I mix all of these colors together. Oh, you might be wondering how I depotted these eyeshadows. I will not show that on camera, mostly because I didn't record it and time travel is impossible, but let's just say I did not do it the most safe way. <laughs> the first step I take when I Franken makeup is protecting my hands. These are some nitrile exam gloves that I stole from a doctor's bought at CVS. I don't necessarily think that the dimethicone or the rubbing alcohol or the eyeshadow is going to hurt my skin. It's more so that washing dimethicone off of your hands is kind of an annoying process, so. Let's get started. Welcome to the operating table. I have this little bowl here that I'm gonna use to mix things in. I also have a little mortar and pestle here that I bought from TKB Trading. It's a little sticky inside because one time I used this to mix lip gloss in and it's like porous porcelain in here so you're really kind of just supposed to keep it limited to powder products. So a bunch of this is probably gonna stick to the inside, whatever. So I'm going to start by using the depotting tool here and these eyeshadows and getting these into this bowl. As we can already see, Franken makeup can be kind of a messy process. It's fine. Then we're just going to deposit that into our little dish. It's pretty though. Look at that color. There we go. When I get incredibly close to the camera, you can see the faithful color of this. Perfect. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll sort of make a series of different projects where I will start with one sort of set of pigments and then as I make the mixture, when I have remnants of a mixture, I will then create another shade based off of that by adding in more materials. So I end up with like four or five different eyeshadows. So why don't we get the actual fun part started here? This is where things can and often do go wrong. It's okay. You can salvage a lot of things, turn them into something else. And also there's no shame in starting over. Half the fun of Franken makeup is frick, frank, Franking up? That's not funny. So we're gonna add about a cap full of isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I have 50% isopropyl because that's what was in my apartment. I don't wanna overload the mixture with liquid, so I'm going to add more later. And then I have some dimethicone here. I got this off of Amazon. We're just gonna add a very small amount of it. There we go. Maybe a little bit more than that. 
Uh, okay, that's probably too much already. It's fine. And then, using my depotting tool, we begin our mixing. The alcohol will evaporate, but you don't wanna start with too much liquid because then you'll end up flooding the mixture and it can be hard to dry it out while you're still manipulating it. So once you get to this sort of like chunky, moussey texture, you're actually probably good to put this in a pan and just set it to dry somewhere. So I was a huge dingbat and I ordered a bunch of these like 55 millimeter pans because I am a, a stupid American and I didn't know how big 55 millimeters was. I just sort of like spoon it in there. This is the part where it gets the most gross looking. You just sort of like smush it down, kind of like I'm spreading jam on a... I, wow, my brain was like on an omelet. I was like, that's... That's not where you put jam, like literally even a little bit. We have a little pan of wet, moussey Franken makeup. That'll dry. I don't really care about pan prints. I'm not running a business. I'm not selling these. I don't really care if my eyeshadow looks hideous, you know? So as you can see, we have a pretty solid amount of leftover mixture here. So this is where things get especially fun. I have two highlighters from the Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild Glow Kit. These were gifted to me by Hannah Louise Poston, and so now they are finishing their lives in a Franken makeup craft. So I think I'm going to take this sort of like blue purple shift one and I'm gonna add, oh God, all of it. <laughs> Just chonk that in there. I'm abandoning the mortar and pestle at this point. It disappointed me. I'm gonna take it out into a field and destroy it like I'm in office space, okay. So we're just gonna get, get to mixing. Ooh, okay, let me bring this closer to you. Isn't that fun? This is the funnest part of it, is honestly the mixing. This is what gives me that like creative rush that I live. That's like if you made a jam out of the whole Andromeda galaxy. Why am I talking about jam so much today? Most Franken eyeshadows that I make end up some variety of purple, just because when you mix anything with purple, that thing becomes purple. Just serve it up, slap it on in there like you're a mean lunch lady in a mid-2000s cartoon. I'm gonna keep experimenting using these two palettes that were very generously gifted to me by my friend, Your Girl Kath. I'll leave her YouTube channel and gorgeous Instagram linked in the description. She was decluttering these two palettes while moving and gave them to me. So as you can see, I'm using the blue and gold shades from both this BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival palette and this LA Girl The Neons eyeshadow palette to try to make a really interesting golden undertoned aqua blue color. So I'm adding all of those shades into my bowl and then I'm gonna get to mixing it and then we will add our ingredients and get the mixture all the way ready. I wound up needing to double up on the amount of alcohol I used in this mixture because there were just so many eyeshadows and so much powder that needed to be mixed. As you can see with the normal application of alcohol, the mixture got really dry and doughy too quickly with a lot of unconstituted powder left to be accounted for. And I think I may have added a little bit too much. You can see the mixture getting really liquidy and soupy, but after I used a paper towel in a later step to remove some of that alcohol, it actually dried down really well. And this shadow ended up being my favorite of the series that I made today, so you'll see a swatch in a little bit, but this one was really, really successful. So I'm adding it into one of my larger pans because as I just mentioned, there's so much <laughs> mixture here. We needed to use one of the big 55 millimeter pans. And now you see me tapping it to even out the mixture a bit and adding a paper towel on top to soak up some of that excess alcohol so the drying process won't take as long. Now you can see things get a little random. I had a lot of mixture left over, so I decided, frick it, you know, let me just add in all these pink and orange and champagne shades and see what disgusting looking nonsense I can make of it. So just like before, we add in a little bit of dimethicone, some alcohol and start mixing. The color this was while I was mixing it is awful. It looks like <laughs> rotting ground beef, but I promise you it doesn't turn out to be as gross as it looks right now. 
As I was mixing this, I was like, no one's gonna wanna see this. This looks like something you would find behind your couch while moving and then burn your house down as a result. And obviously there's a lot of mixture here. It's really clay-like, really thick. And I did the same thing. I squished it down with a napkin. It's a McDonald's napkin because I'm gross. Um, and I ended up losing some of the mixture by it squishing out over the sides, as you can see. But you know, it evened out the pan a bit, so it's okay. And there's a swatch of the color. It's a terrible swatch, but it's a nice color. And here's an establishing shot of everything I made today. Honestly guys, I think I might switch to going camera above, hands on flat surface type filming full time. I'm really inspired by the love of my life, the you suck at cooking guy. I think the two of us have a really beautiful future together even though he has no idea who I am. So this stuff might look familiar to you, right? Some of this is the stuff that we just went through making. You might recognize these three if you saw my brief frenetic declutter from right before I moved, which would have been right at the end of May. These are made primarily with discarded eyeshadows from the Beige Cosmetics Solar Flare Palette, which is why they are so metallic. This middle one, I actually quite like. It has sort of a spongy texture still, because I really doubled up on the dimethicone in it. You'll notice. See, don't steal my identity, please. I have nothing worth taking except this channel and my sparkling personality and $1.7 trillion in the bank. I mean, um, my personality. Yeah, it's a really nice neutral purple. See her? I'm really proud of that one. I think I didn't use enough dimethicone and maybe use too much alcohol because it's quite firm, but it is this really unique sort of, uh, I don't know, like warm pewter color. Fun fact, I hate the word pewter but I really like this eyeshadow. I feel very vulnerable not having nail polish on. If my nails look dirty, it's because I've just been fingers deep in so much eyeshadow, so I'm sorry about that. The next couple products I wanna to talk to you about are cheek products. This is my Ofra and Nikki Tutorials Everglow Highlighter. If you're not familiar with what this initially looks like when you buy it from the internet, it looks like this. Now, how did I get from that to this? Well, I loved how the shades of this highlighter looked when they were all swirled together a really gorgeous rose gold. But I was kind of frustrated because that light, bright white highlight was way too light and fair for my skin and it makes everything look chalky. I took my depotting tool and I scraped out a whole frick ton of the white. Using some rubbing alcohol, I mixed together the bronze and champagne shades. This is my Too Faced Cherry Bomb blush that came out with the Tutti Frutti collection. This is a similar situation. Basically, this initially looks like this when you buy it from the store. And what I did was I crushed it up and I mixed the gold and red together because I I could never get a solid ratio of the color that I wanted by dipping from one side into the other. So I mixed it together. So now I don't have to worry about getting a ratio because I get a perfect one every time. See, there she is. I love this blush. This is the one I might be the proudest of. This is a Holika Holika blush. It has my little eggy boy, Gudetama, on it. I love this little lad. This is the Lazy and Easy Jelly Dough Blusher. And the initial shade of this was Grapefruits Jelly. Here is what mine looks like. See that comparison? That skill at work. So I spooned it out onto a little palette and it has this great spongy, moussey, ColourPop Super Shock Shadow-esque texture that I wanted to maintain. So I had to find a good balance of wet and dry pigment ingredients to mix into it so it would keep that texture but not get too soupy and never dry or just completely lose its sponginess. I turned to lipstick. This is the color that we have now. It's like a really fun, like pure rose pink. Essentially what's in here is a little bit of my Glossier Cloud Paint in Haze, which I use a lot during Franken makeup. I actually think I use it more in Franken makeup than as an actual blush. I used, I think an entire Essence lipstick. I don't remember the shade, but it was like a berry purple. And that was honestly most of it. And also several scrapings of a couple Morphe blushes I have from the Morphe 9B palette. But I am obsessed with this blush now. I wear this multiple times a week. Okay. Ooh. Oh God, that one was almost a disaster. Okay, how could I forget this little baby? This was my first attempt at creating a blush. This was created with two Ulta collection products, a highlighter stick and a lipstick that were both way too light for my skin. So I mashed them together and also included a little bit of my Glossier Cloud Paint and Haze and a little bit of my Milk Makeup Holographic Stick in Mars. I put it in a little bowl, I microwaved it, and then I poured it so it would dry and set and be this little cream blush. Oof, 
God, I love it. I love it so much. It just immediately melts into my skin so beautifully. Lipsticks are so close to being blushes. If you wanna make Frank and Cream blushes and you have a bunch of lipsticks you don't like, there are tons of colors that don't work on the lips but do work on the cheeks. So that should be the first place you look. These are both liquid eyeshadows that I made. This one I made a couple of months ago and this one I made earlier today. Here is what it looks like. I adore this. I'm really proud of this. Oh my God. Oh, shut up. It looks gross. It looks like an oil slick in the road. I swear to God, but I love it. This is the exact kind of just like dark brown that's sort of like an instant smoky eye. I feel like I'm surrounded by trophies. Like I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. Now the largest section is obviously the lip product section. Would we expect anything less from me? No, we would not. Let's start with the products that I did the least to. These are two lip glosses that I already owned. These are not completely original colors. I just did small edits to them. So when you initially buy this gloss, it is a bit thicker, it's a bit more pigmented. As we know, I'm obsessed with really sheer lip glosses. I didn't even take out the stopper. I literally just scraped the applicator of Camel onto this a few times and then dipped its own wand back in. So this is what she looks like. I like this a lot more because I don't like clear glosses with a lot of silver shimmer in them. I just think they look weird and frosty and like something Hilary Duff would have worn in 2002. It's not really my vibe. And now we have this like really nice sort of orange sheerness that's really great for autumn. This is the original slip tease. So you can see it, it's sheared out a lot. Next up, I don't even remember what's in here. I do not remember making this at all, and I actually have not swatched it. Ooh. Oh, it's sort of like a berry moment. That's pretty. Maybe if I smell it, I'll get a clue. I have no earthly idea what this is made out of, but I have it. I made it, so that's cool. This lip gloss was made because I recently made an order with Nika K, which is a brand that I learned about from Makeup Struggles, God rest her channel. They gave me this little extra red lip gloss in the package. I hated the red lip gloss. It was like gross, way too pigmented, bad applicator, slipping around my mouth, horrible. So what I did was I took their Shea Butter Lip Treatment and their Clear Lip Gel, and I mixed it with that red gloss gloss to create this. And this is what she looks like now. It's a lot better. It's sort of like a very cherry, but still sheer gloss. I honestly don't know how much I'll wear this. I'm not a massive, like bright red gloss person, but we'll see. Maybe I'll wear it for like Christmas or something. Oh my God, holiday season, we love it. This one I am absolutely thrilled by. So let me explain what is in here. The e.l.f. Lip Lacquer in Clear, the Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker Gloss, and the ColourPop So Juicy in Big Slice, that red one that came in the summer collection. Like I said, I'm not a huge red gloss person. <laughs> I wasn't wearing that one ever, and I was like, what can I do with this? So I sheared it way the hell out, and I got this goddamn masterpiece of a lip gloss. I love it. I love it so much. It's so, it's like a perfect watermelon pink sheer, beautiful moment. And the Soap and Glory gloss and the ColourPop gloss mix so well together. It tastes like mint chocolate. When I made this, which was a couple of weeks ago, I think, I was like, oh, I'm so talented. Let's talk about this lipstick. It's in an Essence lipstick too, but there's no Essence lipstick in here. I'll swatch her first. This is an amalgamation of every single nude color from the Anastasia Beverly Hills lip palette, which I bought, barely used over the course of several months and was like, okay, I have to get rid of this, but I don't wanna just throw it away. I got it from Marshalls, it was already super old, and I was like, I can't in good faith give this to someone. It's contaminated with my cooties. So I decided as a send off to this palette, I would mix all of the nude shades together along with a little bit of my glossy cherrybomb.com because Anastasia's lipstick formula is so so hella dry. And now I just have this mostly as a sentimental lipstick. This is a lip gloss I made about a week ago that I've been wearing a lot. This is the only shade that has a name. I've decided to name this shade Lana because I was listening to Lana Del Rey while I made it. And that's like just a very, very sheer peach nude. Basically, I took the ColourPop So Juicy Gloss in All Talk and the Soap and Glory Pillow Plump XL Gloss in Clear Voyant, and I mix them with a bit of the Wet and Wild Give Me Mocha Liquid Catsuit to create this shade. I mixed them because they were both a little too frosty for my tastes, and now I made an incredible lip gloss out of them. So that was the best possible outcome of that situation. This is really comfortable, a little bit of that plumping, and it has the same flavor as this gloss, that same mint chocolate moment, because it's 
different glosses from the same line. God, there's so much eyeshadow under my fingernails. This looks disgusting. I'm sorry. <laughs> my final lipstick is this one from Milk Makeup. This was originally the shade Wavy, which was like a dark brown that I actually quite liked. And that's what made making this so risky and such a great reward. Because when I use makeup that I don't care about that often for Franken projects, it's kind of low risk. But I actually really liked this lipstick and it was almost full and it was expensive. So if this project didn't work, it would have sucked. But fortunately for me, it did work. And now I have this incredible nude. I love it so much. And unfortunately, I don't really remember what's in it. I do have a nail polish mixing life hack for you. And this is really just regular nail polish life hack, but on occasion you will need to thin out your nail polishes. They get old, they get exposed to air, they get clumpy, they get dry, they get chunky. Especially if you're mixing in things like highlighter powder or eyeshadow, a great way to thin it out is to buy nail polish thinner or just use acetone, which I always have lying around. But it can be very difficult to get an exact amount of acetone into your nail polish bottle if you're trying to pour it from the acetone bottle. It's probably gonna happen is you're gonna pour it all over your goddamn self. Hopefully you're not near an open flame. A great thing to do is if you have any dropper bottles around, like the kind you get with skincare, for example, and this was a bottle of hyaluronic acid from the ordinary. Now it's mama's special little acetone dropper. So don't put this on your face, cause uh, it's acetone. But it's great because I can drip it directly into a nail polish bottle and then shake it up and thin out my nail polish a bit. I've had to do that for many nail polishes here. I think that's everything. I probably have one or two Franken makeup products lying around somewhere that I didn't even remember I actually did anything to because that is how often I do this. Let me know if you liked this video and let me know if you have anything you are planning on Franken makeuping or if there's anything you've already Franken makeuped. I would love to know. And now the next time somebody asks me in my comments how I made something with Franken and makeup, you can direct them to this video because I've just explained it. It's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of gambling. You're not going to get something right on the first time. And if you do, don't tell me because it means you're better than me. And I'm going to internalize that to mean that I have no skills. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. But before you leave, I'm going to need you to do a quick favor for me. If you could go ahead and have an amazing day for me. That would be absolutely spooktacular. And if you would like to interact with me betwixt uploads, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter where I am absurdly active, at Nisi Pisa. I'm serious, I tweet like 15 times a day. If you ever tag me in a makeup product on Instagram, there's a 100% chance I already tweeted about it on Twitter earlier that day. I also have a second channel that I will link in the description called Extra Nisi Pisa, where I post music and covers. I'm in a big Broadway phase right now, which means I've recorded a bunch of Broadway covers, but I am too scared to post them. Thanks again for watching this video and don't forget to use code Nisi Pisa for 10% off at checkout at your local creativity store. <laughs> Bye. I would like to issue a swift shout out to my skin for holding it the hell down. I'm gonna make such a beautiful bride for the you suck at cooking guy. It's so creepy. It's, I'm so creepy. Okay. Ah! Ah! Okay.